Salmon are dying before they spawn in urban creeks and streams. Our role is to investigate the extent of this problem and what we can do to fix it. You all are familiar with the salmon life cycle. Uh, there are an amazing species, born in fresh water, swim out to the ocean, stay there for a few years, and then swim thousands of miles to return home to reproduce. What we've observed is that returning adult coho salmon are dying as soon as they re-enter these small freshwater streams. To study this issue, we assembled a team of all volunteers. Our volunteer team went out on Longfellow Creek in the West Seattle neighborhood every single day for the duration of the fall salmon run. That goes from October through December every year. On the creek, our volunteers were counting how many salmon were able to return and then evaluating how many were able to spawn successfully. Longfellow runs for about four miles through the West Seattle neighborhood before it empties into the Duwamish River. We survey about a quarter mile stretch highlighted here in yellow. That is the only accessible spawning habitat for salmon on the entire creek. You'll also notice a lot of gray on this map. That gray is pavement. And in fact, Longfellow drains the rainwater that washes off of nearly 3,000 surrounding paved acres. To put that in perspective, that's equivalent to about 2,273 football fields. When rain falls on a forest, the trees do an amazing job of soaking up that water like a sponge and then cleaning it before it is re-released back into streams and rivers. In contrast, our cities are usually paved and concrete cannot do that same service. Instead, we've designed cities to wash rainwater off of paved surfaces as quickly as possible uh, and into storm drains. Those storm drains usually discharge immediately into whatever waterway is nearby. This is one storm drain. It empties underwater uh, close to the head of the Duwamish River. Normally you can't see this, but this is what it looks like every time it rains. This is one storm drain, and in the Puget Sound region, we have nearly 30,000 stormwater outlets that look like this every time it rains. To put that in perspective, these are two photos of Longfellow Creek taken from the exact same location, one on a sunny day and the other on a rainy day. Uh, the water level on the rainy, rainy day is several feet higher, and that is due to the huge amount of stormwater that washed in in a matter of hours. What you can't see are the chemical components of that stormwater. It includes heavy metals such as cadmium, zinc, arsenic, copper, uh, and organic contaminants with long names like phthalates, PCBs, PBDEs, PAHs, nonylphenols. Those are all either endocrine disruptors that affect our homo hormones or carcinogens that can cause cancer in humans. We also see nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus, which in big quantities can cause the oxygen to deplete in water. So this is the toxic cocktail that's meeting our salmon when they try to swim upstream. Uh, when these coho try and, and uh, make their runs upstream to reproduce, a few things start to happen. First, they become very disoriented and start swimming in circles near the surface of the water. Next, they'll usually flop on their sides like you see in this photo and start gaping at their mouth. They look like they're struggling to breathe. Unfortunately, most of these fish die within a few hours before they're able to spawn. This, foot, this video shows um, an otherwise very healthy salmon trying to swim through polluted stormwater. And that brings us back to our survey. As I mentioned, our volunteers are out every day counting the live salmon, looking to see if they're behaving like you just saw in that video, and also taking measurements on the dead salmon. We're measuring how long they are, how wide they are, and we're also checking to see if they have that little adipose fin, which can tell us whether or not it's a wild fish or a fish that was born in a hatchery. Next, we dissect them. 
So the way that we are able to tell if a female salmon has spawned is by looking to see how many eggs are still left inside. This salmon has over 50% of its eggs left inside, so we consider that a case of pre-spawn mortality. This is a female salmon that has spawned, and that's normal. So you can, there are no eggs left inside, so we, we assume that she, she laid, her, laid her eggs successfully. Males are a little more complicated. You can see that there are just more guts inside, but unfortunately there's nothing that can tell us whether or not the salmon was able to spawn. So we mark all of our males unknown for spawning. Groups have studied pre-spawn mortality on Longfellow Creek for, since 2002. And you can see that almost every year, the percentage has been above 50%. If Longfellow Creek were located in a forest, we would only expect to see about 1% of the fish die before spawning. In the middle column, you can also see that the number of fish that were able to return to Longfellow Creek varied quite a bit year to year. That tells us how sensitive these fish are to changes in the ocean or in Puget Sound. Puget Soundkeeper is working with groups like NOAA, the Department of Fish and Wildlife, King County, City of Seattle, and Washington State University to find solutions to this problem. But the issue is complicated and we need more people to study salmon and test solutions. That's where you come in. We invite you to join us on a stream survey or help us come up with creative solutions to protect our natural resources. Thank you.